Samira, it would seem that the approach to um, taxonomy, where different species fit in a hierarchy, is um, a pre-20th century ways of thinking. But it, st it still seems to uh, reverberate in the philosophy of biology community as a, as a subject of interest. Why? Classification in general has always been an interest to, to, philosoph in, to philosophers, and biological classification is especially interesting. That's because there's a long tradition in philosophy of thinking about what a natural kind is that dates all the way back to Aristotle. Mm. So a natural kind is meant to refer to a, a, a grouping of organisms that isn't, uh, sorry, of, of entities of any sort that isn't simply arbitrary, but picks out a genuine um, deep similarity in the world. And differentiated from others. And differentiated from others, precisely. So if you think about the chemical elements in the periodic table, for example, we think of them as natural kinds. So there really is a real reason to divide stuff up that way <laughs> and not some other way. Right. Um, so th then it's natural to ask, well, wh what about in biology? I mean, is the way that we divide up organisms into species and then into a, a classification system, such as the Linnaean system that you were alluding to with your question, um, devised in, by Carl Linnaeus in, in the 18th century, is there, is there reason, what's the fundamental reason to do it that way, not some other way? Are we picking out real units in the, in the, in the living world? Are they natural kinds? Interestingly, opinions have differed on this among biologists and among 20th century biologists and, and 19th century biologists quite dramatically. So for example, Darwin himself, despite writing a book called The Origin of Species, points out in, in one place that in his, or opines in one place that the distinction between what we call a species, a subspecies and a variety <laughs> is really just sort of arbitrary. We just draw a line somewhere and we say, oh, this thing, this thing is a species rather than a subspecies of a bigger species. Mm -hmm. It's two distinct species. Um, however, later in the 20th century, lots of biologists um, came to the view in, in, in the light of the, the, the modern evolutionary synthesis, particularly the, the work of Ernst Meyer, that species were real units out there in nature, at least some of the time. Um, however, that view isn't widely accepted, isn't necessarily universally accepted. And it's often pointed out that the species concept applies not so well to plants and not well at all to microbes, mm. where it's rather difficult to divide some things into species using the same logic that one does for sexually reproducing animals. Mm. Uh, so for these reasons, the species concept and the sort of fundamental philosophical basis of dividing things into species has never gone away. Uh, for, for mammals, sexual selection, one of the tests are can the individuals mate and produce an offspring. And if they can, they're part of the, that species. If they, can, if they can't, or if they mate and there's no, never an offspring, they're not. That's it's, correct. That, that basic idea um, that reproductive compatibility or producing production of fertile offspring is the distinguishing mark of a species is at the heart of what's called the biological species concept or the BSC <laughs> invented by Ernst Meyer in the mid-20th century, and it works very well in its intended domain. Um, so Maya was an ornithologist by training, and it, it works pretty well for birds, indeed for most vertebrates. Um, however, it faces troubling cases too, in part because reproductive isolation is a matter of degree. Not, it's not a hard and fast matter, in part because many living creatures, indeed most, reproduce asexually rather than sexually. Sexual reproduction is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is by no means universal and is of course not found in uh, the microbial world at all. Although microbes and bacteria engage in a form of sex, they don't sexually reproduce. And so in fact, the BSC, the biological species concept, can only be a partial mm -hmm. solution to mm -hmm. the, the, the species problem. Are there applications of it, for example, in, in medicine to classify different kinds of cancer, for example? Um, Interesting. So there, there is a real question about how one uh, classifies and divides up, you know, chops cancer up into different types. And that's certainly um, an instance of a classification problem in science. But I think of that as being somewhat different from the question of, bio, of classification of organisms into species. 
in that really one is interested in that case in uh, disease classification, if you like. Uh, but the general issue arises, are these real divisions that are out there in nature or are, this, are these divisions ones that have been superimposed by the investigator for their own practical purposes? Sure, and in, in the cancer example, um, an analog to the reproducibility compatibility, reproduction compatibility, could be the, uh, uh, the vulnerability to a certain class of drugs. That if one kind of cancer is and another cancer isn't, then they are legitimately two different kinds of things. Interesting, yeah, no, that, I mean, that's a plausible suggestion and indeed, a proponent of the natural kinds idea about classification would would say precisely that in, if they're natural kinds, then they should obey different fundamental principles, if you like. So we would expect that a certain um, chemotherapeutic agent, for example, would work for one, but not for another, mm -hmm. if there really is a, a basis mm -hmm. for, an objective basis for that distinction.